Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about earnings yield. Now, earnings yield in this book, the little book that beats the market, uh, is Joel Greenblatt's metric for how to determine how cheap a stock is, how cheap a business is. Uh, and of course, in this magic formula investing strategy, he uses two metrics. Uh, earnings yield is a measure of how cheap a business is. Return on invested capital is a measure of how good a business is. And when you combine those two metrics, uh, you get screen results that give you the best combination of cheap and good, which is, of course, uh, how Buffett got so wealthy by identifying businesses that are both cheap and good and kind of holding those for the long term. So let's go through an example of Apple stock, how to calculate the earnings yield of Apple. Uh, once you understand how to do that, you can calculate earnings yield for any business. Uh, so let's dive in. So earnings yield, as Joel Greenblatt defines it, there's a lot of kind of nuanced ways uh, of calculating earnings yield. But the way that Joel Greenblatt does it in the little book that beats the market for his magic formula investing approach uh, is earnings yield is pre-tax operating earnings divided by enterprise value, okay? So he uses earnings before interest and taxes uh, because he wants to be able to compare the earnings yield of businesses that have different tax rates and you know different debt structures. Um, so he wanted to remove kind of the the impacts of different tax structures and different uh, interest loads. So you've got EBIT here, uh, and I'm going to show you in Morningstar how to get that EBIT number. So EBIT is operating income, okay. Uh, and we're going to look at the last 12 months, the trailing 12-month number, which is $65.59 billion. So that I've listed right here, $65.59 billion. Uh, and then in order to calculate enterprise value, uh, we need to know, you know what the market value of equity is and what the net interest bearing debt is. So net interest bearing debt is just the total debt minus the cash, okay? Because if we wanted to, today we could take all that cash uh, on the balance sheet and pay off uh, the debt. And then all we have is the remaining interest bearing debt. So, uh, and also this market value of equity includes preferred equity, preferred stock. Uh, so remember that in your calculation. And to go back, earnings yield, all it is, it's how much business, how much a business earns relative to what you'd have to pay to buy the business. And of course, uh, with any business, you know, you're going to have the debt holders uh, and you're going to have the equity holders. And in order to kind of control that whole business, you have to settle up with the debt holders. You have to pay off the debt. Uh, and of course, you have to buy out the equity holders. So that's where with enterprise value, you've got the equity and you've got the debt. So in order to calculate enterprise value, uh, we're going to add the market capitalization of Apple uh, to kind of this, this net debt, which is total debt minus cash, as I said before. So let's find those numbers in Morningstar. So in order to get the market value of equity, I'm going to go over to this quote tab. And you see here the market cap, $1.633 trillion. So in terms of billion dollars, we've got 1633. So that's what this is. $16.33 billion in terms of market cap. Now, in order to find debt, we're going to go over here to the financials. We're going to come down 
to the balance sheet. I want to look at the table view. So total debt as of the latest quarter, $109.5 billion. So 109.5. And then to get to the cash, we're just going to look down here at cash and cash equivalents. For the latest quarter, we've got $94.05 billion. So I'm rounding that to 94.1. So if you look at the net interest-bearing debt here, it's 15, $15 billion. So you add that 15 billion to the 1633, and your enterprise value is $1648 billion. Uh, and of course, to calculate the earnings yield, I'm just going to divide EBIT, which is operating income, over the last 12 months, divided by enterprise value. And we have an earnings yield of 4%. Now, if you think about what this means, it means, you know, based on the last year of, of Apple, both EBIT and enterprise value, it's going to take 25 years to kind of earn back what I'm paying today for Apple, um, both equity and debt. Now that's that's a pretty scary proposition for me. You know, if you know if I'm if I'm buying a business today, and it's going to take 25 years for me to earn that money back from the the operating income of the business, that's a pretty scary uh, investment proposition to me. It's very expensive. Uh, a 4% earnings yield is, is quite low. Um, of course, Apple is a fantastic business. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's also a, a very large business. You're talking about $1.6 trillion uh, in, in market cap, also in enterprise value. So I would question, you know, there's a lot of people who think Apple is still going to grow a lot over the next decade. Um, you know, it's possible. It's hard to imagine a company that big still having a lot of growth ahead of it. Um, but, you know, Apple is a very strong business. But, you know, when it comes to investing, you know, if, if, if you're counting on so much growth from a business that's already so large, you know, to me, there's a lot of risk in that. Um, to me, the odds of, you know, losing money on a company that has a 4% earnings yield, are they're just too high for me. Uh, so, you know, I'm definitely taking a pass at the current price of Apple. You know, I'd love to own Apple. Uh, it would have to drop significantly from here. You know, and it's funny, there, if you look back just a year, maybe a year and a half uh, before Warren Buffett bought Apple, I mean, the, the earnings yield was at like 12%. So it's just gotten insanely, insanely expensive. Uh, really, it seems like since this uh, pandemic started back in February and March, I mean, the, the price of Apple has just taken off. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to go through that example of Apple, how to calculate earnings yield. Earnings yield is an incredibly uh, important metric uh, in terms of gauging how cheap or how expensive a business is. Like I said, I like to, I'm not really interested in anything where the earnings yield is less than 10%. Uh, I think back when I bought um, GraphTech, the earnings yield on GraphTech was something like 30%, which, you know, indicated to me that within three or four years, if I had bought GraphTech, I was going to be making my money back just on, on the operating income. So that, that was a much more exciting opportunity. Of course, you know, how things have played out with those long-term contracts. Uh, there's some, the delinquency on those long-term contracts is going up uh, with, with the current situation, uh, with bankruptcies that are happening. 
So it, it became a less, uh, a less exciting investment due to the kind of current situation. But, you know, it, it's really important that when you're buying a business, uh, you, you have a sense for how long it's going to take for those earnings to pay you back for, for what you paid for the business. And, you know, looking at a 25 year payback based on the current earnings of Apple, it's a, again, a scary proposition. So anyway, guys, just wanted to go through this example, smash that thumbs up if you found this useful and, um, yeah, if you have any questions about the magic formula, Joel Greenblatt, earnings yield, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer those. So without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.